صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا غريب مظلوم كربلاء ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجعلناهم أئمة يهدون بأمرنا وأوحينا إليهم فعل الخيرات وإيقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وكانوا لنا عابدين طيبوا أفواهكم بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد For the love of the أهل البيت صلوا على محمد وآل محمد For the love of Fatima al-Zahra, salawatullahi alayha, another salawat with your loudest voices. After the martyrdom of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, there was a great split within the ummah, a very big division that took place immediately after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This division caused many blood to be shed. This division caused many battles, many killings. And this division is going on until today. Wherever you see in the Muslim world, there's killing, there's bombing, there's massacres, know that that division is the same division that took place after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Just like the division is very clear today, all over the Muslim world we see fighting within the Muslims, that same division was very clear immediately after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Even though we see some Muslims, they try to draw a very clean picture, a very perfect picture, as if nothing happened after the death of Rasulullah. As if there was no fighting, as if all of the Sahaba lived with one another peacefully, no fighting, no wars. This is the picture that some try to draw for us today. But history is very clear that the Islamic history within the Muslims between the Sahaba was very dark. We have a very grim history. There was fighting. There was blood that was spilled after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. There was a very big division and we see it until today. What was the reason for this division? What was the reason for this fighting within the Muslims? Was it over the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Were there some that were still worshipping idols? They still wanted to worship idols? Was it over accepting the Qur'an? No. 
The division was over imamah. The division was over the meaning of the Qur'an. Who explains the meaning of the Qur'an? Who does tafsir of the Qur'an? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi tells Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ana uharibuhum ala tanzeel wa anta tuharibuhum ala ta'weel. They are going to fight me over the Qur'an, believing in the Qur'an, the Qur'an coming down upon the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And they're going to fight you over who gets to explain the meaning of the Qur'an, who gets to bring the definition, who gets to bring the commentary, the tafsir of the Qur'an. This is why they fought Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. The fighting with Ali ibn Abi Talib was not over believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was something that was agreed upon. There were no more idols during the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But the fighting was over who gets to decide the meanings of the Qur'an. And the division happened because Allah promised in the Qur'an or Allah told us, told the Muslims in the Qur'an, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلْ إِنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ Allah says Muhammad is a prophet. He's either going to be, he's either going to die a normal death or he's going to be killed. If he's dead, are you going to turn back over your heels? Everything that he came, 23 years he came and he taught you. Immediately after he dies, are you going to turn back? And this is what happened. Some Muslims turned back immediately. Rasulullah had not died yet. Rasulullah was still alive and some Muslims turned against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa some Muslims turned against his holy household <coughs> the gathering in Saqifah while Rasulullah has not even been buried yet they gathered to cause a conspiracy and they chose a leader someone whom Rasulullah did not choose for them this is our dark history. And the first defender of Imamah, and the first casualty of Imamah, and the first one to be killed for the sake of Imamah was Fatima al Zahra. This is why we are gathering to defend. This is why we are gathering to remember Fatima al Zahra. Because she was the first person who died, who gave up her life for what she believes in. She gave up her life for the sake of Imamah. Today, until today, people are being killed because of Imamah, because of this principle that we believe in, in Iraq, in Pakistan, all over. We see there are Muslims, there are Shias being killed because they believe in an Imam. Well, know that the first one who was killed because of Imamah was Fatima al-Zahra, salawatullahi alayha. The first casualty was Fatima al Zahra. Fatima al Zahra did not only defend the concept of Imamah, Fatima al Zahra defined the concept of Imamah. She let the Muslims at that time know what is the role of the Imam. She defended the Imamah and she defined what the role of the Imam is. Narrations tell us that Fatima al Zahra, salawatullahi alayha, she left and she entered into the political scene four times after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi One time, she went to Abu Bakr after he took away Fadak from her. She went to him and she told him, why did you take Fadak? And inshallah, I will, I will talk about this in two nights. Another time she went out went to give the sermon the khutbah al-fadakiyah in the mosque of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi she went out and she gave a speech that we hear until today a third time she went out was she asked Amir al-Mu'mineen he would take her to the houses of the companions of Rasulullah and she would tell them weren't you there on the day of Ghadir didn't you give bay'ah to my husband Ali ibn Abi Talib on the day of Ghadir she would remind them of the day of Ghadir the bay'ah of the day of Ghadir and of course 
the narration of Ghadir, one of the narrators of Hadith al-Ghadir is Fatima al-Zahra. She was present on the day of Ghadir. So she went out to remind them, weren't you there? You were there on the day of Ghadir. Even their wives were there on the day of Ghadir. And the fourth time was when the wives of the Muhajireen and the Ansar came to visit her on her deathbed. That was a time when she reminded them and she defended Ali ibn Abi Talib. She defended the Imamah at that time. And of course, there was another time that she defended the Imamah and that was when she came to intercede for Ali ibn Abi Talib when she came behind the door. This was also a time she came to defend the Imam of her time. Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam defined what is the role of the Imam? What is the job of the Imam? How do we know who the Imam is? In her lectures, in these times that she went out in front of the Muslims, she let them know what the job of the Imam is. How do we know who the Imam is? And the first thing she mentioned is that the Imam is chosen by Allah. The Imamah is chosen by Allah just like the Prophet is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She let them know, she let all of the Muslims know that the Imam has to be chosen by Allah. There is no other way. We cannot vote for someone and consider this person an Imam. We cannot choose someone through force and say this person is the Imam. Because the Imam is someone who represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we all gather and say we choose this person to represent Allah? No. Allah, He is the one who chooses who represents Him. And Fatima al-Zahra, she saw that it was her role. Because Fatima al-Zahra, she is the one who comes in between prophethood and imamah. She is the one who brings prophethood to imamah. She is the wife of Amir al-Mu'mineen. She's the, she's the dot that connects the Prophet to the Imam. So she defines the role of the Imam. And the Imams, they say, إِنَّ فَاطِمَةَ الزَّهْرَى هِيَ الصِّدِّيقَةُ الْكُبْرَى وَعَلَى مَعْرِفَتِهَا دَارَةِ الْقُرُونِ الْأُولَى This is the hadith of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, Fatima al-Zahra, she is the Siddiqah al-Kubra. She is the great Siddiqah. And through her ma'rifah, through knowing her, through believing in her, the Qurun al-Ula, the universe, revolves. This is Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. This is the role that Fatima al-Zahra, she is the one who brought the Imams. She is the one, she is the mother of the Imams. She is the one who connects us with our Imams. She is the one who connects Rasulullah with the Imams. So first she tells them that the Imam is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says this clearly in the Quran. Inni nasi imama. Allah uses the word ja'al. Every time Allah appoints a prophet or an Imam, Allah uses the word ja'al. Appointing. Allah says, I have appointed you as an Imam. I have appointed you as a Prophet. Ya Dawood, inna ja'alna ka Khalifa. O Dawood, we made you the Khalifa. Wa ja'alna hum a'immatan yahduna bi amrana. The Imam is appointed through ja'al. The Imam is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuh. Allah chose who he wants. Allah chose the prophets. So this is the first thing that Fatima al-Zahra told them and reminded the Muslims about, that the Imam has to be chosen by Allah. You cannot vote for someone. You cannot bring someone by force. Yes, you want someone to represent you? Go ahead. Choose someone to represent you. But don't choose someone that represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want some, this is here, a lot of the Muslims, they say, yes, Allah says shura in the Quran. Wa amruhum shura baynahum. Yes, this is very clear. Allah says, wa amruhum. Their matters are shura between themselves. But when it comes to the ahd of Allah, when it comes to the imamah, Allah says, la yanalu ahdi al-zalimeen. This is something that has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to our matters, Allah says, wa amruhum shura baynahum. So the Imam is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Fatima Zahra alayhi salam reminded the Muslims and she told them that you will never find success and the Muslim Ummah will never reach prosperity without the true Imam. She says in her khutbah al-fadakiyah, فَجَعَلَ اللَّهِ طَاعَتَنَا نِظَامًا لِلْمِلَّةِ وَإِمَامَتَنَا أَمَانًا مِنَ الْفِرْقَةِ She says, Ta'a, the ta'a of the Ahl al-Bayt, the ta'a of the true Imam, this is the only thing that will bring organization to the Ummah. And this is the only thing that will bring peace to the Ummah. فَجَعَلَ اللَّهِ طَاعَتَنَا نِظَامًا لِلْمِلَّةِ وَإِمَامَتَنَا أَمَانًا مِنَ الْفِرْقَةِ And our imamah, the imamah that is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the only thing that will get rid of division. The true imam is the one that gets rid of division. This is where you have a structured, organized nation, when you have the true imam. The second point that Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam pointed out when she would speak to the Muslims is that the Imam, the chosen leader has to be a ma'soom. The chosen leader has to be an infallible. Meaning that this person does not sin. Meaning that this person does not forget. Meaning that this person does not make mistakes. We believe that the prophets and the imams are ma'soom because Allah chose them. So Allah makes them ma'soom because how can Allah send someone for us to follow and this person makes a mistake? If I go and I make the same mistake, then I tell Allah on the day of judgment, you can't judge me. You can't punish me. I'm making the same mistake that this person made and you chose this person. So this is why it goes against the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah to send someone, appoint someone who makes mistakes. And of course, when we say that the Imam and the Prophet is ma'soom, we also mean that Fatima al-Zahra is also a ma'soomah. Fatima al-Zahra, she is also an infallible. And what's the proof of her, of her infallibility? First of all, the Qur'an. Allah says in the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرَ Isn't Fatima al-Zahra a part of the Ahl al-Bayt? Isn't she the Ahl al-Bayt? She is the one who narrates the hadith of Al-Kisa. She is the one who makes up the Ahl al-Bayt. If it was not for Fatima, we would not have Ahl al-Bayt. And Allah purifies the Ahl al-Bayt in the Qur'an. Allah removes all of the rich, all of the filth, and then Allah purifies them. وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرَ Another proof for the infallibility of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam is the hadith of Rasulullah that is accepted by all the Muslims. Rasulullah says, يَرْضَ اللَّهِ لِرِضَى فَاطِمَةِ وَيَغْضَبُ لِغَضَبِهَا Usually we see we, a, a mu'min, a true believer, he is happy when Allah is happy with him. But Allah with Fatima al-Zahra, it's the opposite. Allah is happy. Allah is satisfied when Fatima al-Zahra is satisfied. يَرْضَ اللَّهِ لِرِضَى فَاطِمَةِ وَيَغْضَبْ لِغَضَبِهَا This is Fatima al-Zahra. If Fatima al-Zahra makes mistakes, if she does something wrong, if she's not a ma'soom, if she's not infallible, how can Allah be satisfied if she does something wrong? So this is proof that Fatima al-Zahra does not do anything wrong. This is proof that Fatima al-Zahra is infallible. This is the second point. The Imam, she defined and she let the Muslims know that the Imam has to be a ma'soom. The third point, that the Imam's actions, the actions of an Imam, the actions of a ma'soom Imam are hujjah upon us. The actions of a leader that is appointed by Allah are proof upon us. So when we see Rasulullah do something, when we see Amir al muminin when we see Fatima al-Zahra do something, this means that this is halal. This means that this is mustahab. This means that this is something that's okay. And the job, the duty of the imam is when the imam sees someone doing something wrong, it's the responsibility of the imam to do amr bil ma'roof and nahi an al munkar. So if the imam sees someone doing something wrong, he has to do amr bil ma'roof. 
If this person is not doing, if the Imam does not do Amr bil Ma'roof, then that means this person, the Imam is satisfied with this person. That means this person, what he's doing, what she's doing is okay. The actions of the Imam are proof upon us. Fatima al Zahra, we also say the same thing about her. Her actions are proof upon us. When we hear that Fatima al Zahra used to go and cry next to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, this means that that's mustahab what she's doing. Or else she wouldn't be doing it. When we see her do anything, this means that what she's doing is mustahab, what she's doing is okay, what she's doing is right. Her actions are proof upon us. And Imam al-Hasan al-Askari alayhi salam he says, نَحْنُ حُجَجُ اللَّهِ We the Imams, we are the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَحْنُ حُجَجُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْخَلَائِقِ وَأُمُّنَا فَاطِمَةَ حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا He says, we the Imams, we are the proof of Allah upon the khala'iq, upon the creation. And our mother Fatima, she is the proof of Allah upon us. She is the hujjah upon the hujjah of Allah. The Imam, he's saying that Fatima al-Zahra's position is higher than him. She is the proof upon the Imam. Imam al-Hujjah. Imam al-Hujjah. Imam al-Mahdi ajjal Allah ta'ala farajah. Allahumma salli. Amen. He says in a hadith, Wali bibnati Rasulillah uswatun hasana. And I see a role model. I see a hujjah when I hear and when I see the history and when I see the life of the daughter of Rasulullah Fatima alayhi salam. He says, She is my role model. Wali bibnati Rasulillah uswatun hasana. I take her as a role model. This is Imam al Hujjah saying something like that. The fourth point. The fourth point that Fatima al Zahra teaches us about the Imam, the role of the Imam, is that the Imam is connected with the unseen. The Imam is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, some of the Muslims, they, cho they chose a leader for themselves. They say this leader was appointed by the Muslims. But this leader for them is not connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a person who used to rule the Muslim ummah. He did not have a direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say the imam is connected with Allah. There's a connection. The imam, he is the one that is connected to the sky. He is the one who is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The imam is connected with the unseen. There are many things in this life that we do not see. There are many things that we cannot comprehend. There are many things that we do not realize in this life. But the Imam is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran that in this life there's a curtain in front of us. We have a blurred image. We cannot see everything in this life. Allah says in the Quran, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Allah says, when we are alive, our image, our vision is blurred. We cannot see reality. We cannot see things clearly. There are many things in this life that we do not see clearly. Once we die, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ We'll remove that veil. We'll remove that curtain. فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Then you will be able to see clearly once you die. But the Imam, he's connected with Allah. The Imam, he has a clear vision from day one. The Imam's vision is not blurred. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, لَوْ كُشِفَ لِيَ الْغِطَاءَ مَزْدَدْتُ يَقِينًا He says, if this ghita if this curtain was to be removed, my, my certainty would not increase because I have reached Ayn al yaqeen This is Amir al muminin This is the Imam. They have reached certainty. Their certainty does not increase once they die. There are many people who do not worship Allah in this life. There are many people who do haram in this life. Once they die, they say, Ya laytani kuntu turaba. 
Ya Layt, and only if I can go back. Because after they die, they see certainty. They see reality. The ones who deny the existence of Allah, once they, the moment they are dying, Fir'aun, Fir'aun, the moment he, he was dying, he used to say, I am God. The moment he was dying, the moment he realized that he's nothing, that moment he had faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it was too late. So the Imam is connected with the unseen and nothing increases the vision of the Imam because the Imam's vision is Ayn al yaqeen The fifth and final point that the Imam has knowledge of the Qur'an. Who has knowledge of the Qur'an other than the Imam? Who has knowledge of the Qur'an other than the ones whom the Qur'an came down in their household? The Prophet, he has the knowledge of the Qur'an and his holy household. No one else has knowledge of the Qur'an. The ones who are parallel to the Qur'an, they are the only ones who have knowledge of the Qur'an. They are the only ones who can explain the true meanings of the Qur'an, the true tafsir of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is not always clear. Allah says in the Qur'an, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ Allah is the one who brought down the kitab upon you, O Rasulullah. فِيهِ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ The Qur'an has some verses that are very clear. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ فِيهِ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ there are some verses in the Qur'an that are not so clear. There are verses that are confusing. Sometimes we see a verse, we don't know what this means. We need the Imam to come and explain the verses to us. The ones who have a disease in their hearts, the ones who have diseases in their hearts, they follow the verses that are not so clear in order to mislead people, in order to fool people. Then Allah says clearly, no one knows the ta'wil, no one knows the true definition no one has the true commentary of the Qur'an other than Allah and the ones whom Allah gave knowledge to. They are the only ones who have the knowledge of the Qur'an. Who are the rasikhuna fil ilm? Who are the ones who have been given knowledge? Allah says in another verse, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask the ones who are who know about the dhikr. Ask the ones who have knowledge of the dhikr if you do not know. Who should we go to? Rasulullah says, and this is narrated by all the Muslims, Sunnis and Shias. They say that Ahl al-Dhikr are Ahl al-Bayt. Ahl al-Dhikr are the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi And another verse Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنُ Kareem fi kitabin maknoon la yamassuhu illa al mutahharoon. The Quran is protected. No one can reach the Quran. No one can comprehend the Quran except the mutahharoon, except the purified. Who are the purified? Innama yuridu Allahu li yudhib ankum al rijsa ahl al bayt wa yutahirakum tathira. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. If we don't take the Qur'an, if we don't take the definition of the Qur'an from its source, from the ones whom Allah tells us to take the definition of the Qur'an from, the commentary of the Qur'an from, we will fall in very big problems. Like we see some Muslims today. There are some Muslims today that believe, they actually believe that Allah has a body that Allah has hands and legs and Allah will put his legs in the hellfire and Allah comes down every Thursday night on a donkey to the earth. This is the belief of some of the Muslims today. Ones who left the Ahlul Bayt, 
They left the Ahlul Bayt and they followed Ibn Taymiyyah. They followed Ibn Wahhab, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab. This is their belief system today. And they actually believe in this. Why? Because they take the tafsir of the Quran from the wrong source. And they fall in this problem. There are verses in the Quran, Allah says, there are verses in the Quran that are not so clear. This is why you need the Ahlul Bayt. This is why you need someone to explain these verses to you. If you don't take the commentary of the Quran from the Ahlul Bayt, you will fall in big problems. Allah says in the Quran, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا Allah will come with the angels and they will line up. Does that mean that Allah also has a body and He comes with the angels? In another verse, Allah says, الرحمن على العرش استوى الرحمن, Allah, He balances on the arsh. Does that mean that Allah has a body and actually has a materialistic arsh? Materialistic throne? In another verse, Allah says, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ The hand of Allah is above their hands. Does that mean that Allah actually has hands? No. If we take the verse, if we take the tafsir from the Ahlul Bayt, they tell us that the hand, here it means the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The strength of Allah. All of these verses that... The Imams, they give us ta'wil, they give us the true tafsir for these, so that our aqa'id, so that our ideology does not fall apart. But unfortunately, some of the Muslims, they left the Ahlul Bayt. And they had to bring the tafsir on their own because they did not follow the Ahlul Bayt. Once they brought tafsir on their own, they fell in traps. What's the difference with someone who believes that Allah has a body and the Christians today? What's the difference with the ones who believe that Allah comes down on a donkey on Thursday nights with the Greek mythology that we hear about? What's the difference with that? This is why we have to take the knowledge of the Quran from the Ahlul Bayt. And this is what Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam told the Muslims. She tells them that you will never find the true meanings of the Quran if you do not take it from the Ahlul Bayt. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam She gave her sermon Using the verses of the Quran She used the Quran To bring her sermon To bring proof upon her enemies She was using the Quran When she was speaking And she tells them She told them That Ali ibn Abi Talib And Rasulullah They are the ones who have the knowledge of the Quran She stood in front of the first Khalifa she went in front of him and she told him that the true knowledge of the Quran is with Ali ibn Abi Talib. She said this. She tells him, Am antum a'lamu bi khusus al Qur'ani wa umumih min abi wa ibn ammi? She tells them, You think you have more knowledge of the Quran than my father and my cousin, Ali ibn Abi Talib? And they knew that they did not have the knowledge of the Quran. Then she tells him, فَدُونَكَهَا مَخْطُومَةً مَرْحُولَهُ تَلْقَاكَ يَوْمَ حَشْرِكْ فَنِعْمَ الْحَكَمُ اللَّهُ وَالزَّعِيمُ مُحَمَّدُ وَالْمَوْعِدُ الْقِيَامَةِ She tells him, اللَّهُمَّ صَلَّى She tells him, you assumed responsibility right now. You took the position, you took the member of Rasulullah where you are the one who wants to give the definition of the Qur'an, you are the one who wants to give the commentary of the Qur'an, you want to give ta'wil of the Qur'an, you will be questioned about this on the Day of Judgment. The day where Rasulullah will be the judge. That is the day that you will be questioned. So Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, she was the first defender of the imamah and she defined the role of the imam to the Muslims. She went out and she kept telling them what the role of the imam is. And she did not let anything stop her from expressing the truth to the Muslims until that led to her death. Imam Sadiq, he says, Inna Fatima Siddiqatun Shahida. He says, Inna Fatima al Zahra Matat Shahida. He says, She was killed, Fatima al Zahra. She was a martyr. She died. And she was killed for the sake of Imama, for the sake of her values, for the sake of her faith. This is what Imam Sadiq says. She was the first to give up her life for the sake of the Imam of her time. 
The wives of the companions, they came to visit her when she was sick. She couldn't stand anymore. She was injured. They came to visit her and she gave a speech to the wives of the Ansar. Fatima Zahra, there are two speeches that she has that's narrated in history by the Sunni books and the Shia books. One is the Khutbah al-Fadakiyya that she gave in the mosque of Rasulullah and another one was a speech that she gave to the wives of the Muhajireen and the Ansar when they came to visit her. When they came, she told them, what was wrong with Ali ibn Abi Talib? What did your husbands find wrong with Ali ibn Abi Talib? Was it his lack of Iman? Was he late in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did he spend years worshipping idols? What, what did you find wrong with Ali ibn Abi Talib? She tells them, وَيْحَهُمْ أَنَّا زَحْزَحُوهَا عَنْ رَوَاسِ الرِّسَالَةِ وَقَوَاعِدِ النُّبُوَّةِ وَمَهْبِطِ الْوَحْيِ الْأَمِينِ وَالطَّبِينِ بِأَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا وَالدِّينِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينِ She says, what was wrong with them? Why did they remove the imamah? from the position that Allah and Rasulullah had appointed. Then she says, وَمَا نَقِمُوا مِنْ أَبِ الْحَسَنِ What did they find wrong with Abu al-Hasan? Was he worshipping idols years in his life? Did he hurt Rasulullah? Did he fight against Rasulullah for years in his life? What did he do? وَمَا نَقِمُوا مِنْ أَبِ الْحَسَنِ نَقِمُوا وَاللَّهِ مِنْهُ نَكِيرَ سَيْفِهِ وَشَدَّ تَوَطْأَتِهِ وَنَكَالَ وَقْعَتِهِ وَتَنَمُّرَهُ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلِ I know, she tells them, I know what they did not like about Abu al-Hasan. They did not like his sword. Because every house in Mecca had someone that was killed by the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And now they were all under, they were all believing, even the ones who were fighting Rasulullah, now they were, they were claiming to be Muslims. وَمَا نَقِمُوا مِنْ أَبِ الْحَسَنِ نَقِمُوا وَاللَّهِ مِنْهُ نَكِيرَ سَيْفِهِ وَشَدَّ تَوَطْأَتِهِ وَنَكَالَ وَقْعَتِهِ وَتَنَمُّرَهُ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ They did not like the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They did not like the faith of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They did not want someone who has the iman of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They want someone that cheats. Ali ibn Abi Talib does not cheat. Ali ibn Abi Talib is with Haq and Haq is with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Sometimes people don't want justice. Justice hurts the oppressors. Justice is not good for the criminals. They do not like it. So they put Ali ibn Abi Talib aside and they chose their own leader. And this is something that we can say that every problem we see today Every problem within the Muslims that we see today is because of the day that they rejected the Khilafah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The day that they chose to bring someone else in the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib, in the position of Imam, to take the position of the Imamah, that was the day, that was the calamity for the, Muslim, for the Muslims. That was the day that led to the massacre of Karbala. That was the day that led to the killing of Imam al-Hasan, to the killing of all of the Imams. That was the day that led to the disappearance of our Imam. And that is the day that leads to the killings today that we see within the Muslims. Muslims being killed, it's because of that day, the day of Saqifah, the day that they chose to bring someone else in the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib. This was one person Fatima al-Zahra who defended the Imamah and another was Sayyida Fatima Ma'suma. Sayyida Fatima al-Ma'suma, whom we gather and we remember her shahada on a narration that she was poisoned. We gather and we remember her today. Who took Fatima al-Zahra as a role model. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. She took Fatima al-Zahra as a role model. And she went to follow her brother, Imam al-Rida alayhi salam. They had sent Imam al-Rida to Khurasan and she knew that Imam al-Rida was going to pass away. He had told her. So she left the city of her grandfather. She left the city of Rasulullah Medina and she went 
She was traveling to Khurasan in Sawah. She was poisoned and the, ca the caravan of Bani Hashim was attacked and the men in that caravan were killed. She was poisoned and she asked to be taken to Qom. In Qom, she spent 18 days, 17 days in Qom until she passed away. But once she passed away, the Shias, they gathered and they had a very big tashia, a very big funeral for her. They gathered today, millions visit her grave today. Every day, thousands are visiting her. They know where her grave is. But where is the grave of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam Where is the grave of her grandmother Fatima al-Zahra, the daughter of Rasulullah? What happened to the daughter of Rasulullah? Why did no one... Why was it only seven people attended the tashi' of Fatima al-Zahra? Why was it that only a few people attended her funeral? Why was she buried in the middle of the night? This is the daughter of Rasulullah. How can we forget the pain of Fatima al-Zahra? How can we forget what happened to Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam? Many of us, many people, they say, don't bring the name of Fatima al-Zahra. Don't mention what happened to Fatima al-Zahra. How can we not mention what happened to Fatima al-Zahra? How can we forget the broken ribs? How can we forget the burned door? How can we forget the miscarried child that she had? These are the tragedies that fell upon Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. And we begin by giving our condolences to Imam al-Zaman, Imam al-Hujjah. Ya sahib al-Amr, ya sahib al-Amr, fal-khatb jalilun yudhib qalb al-saburi. أو تدري لم أحرق الباب بالنار أرادوا إطفاء ذاك النور ما سقوط الجنين ما حمرة العين ما بال قرطها المنثور After taking Khalif, after the Khalifa, the false Khalifa took authority, they went to attack and ambush the house of Amir al Mu'mineen. They wanted Ali ibn Abi Talib to give bay'ah to them after they had given him bay'ah. They came to attack the house of Amir al Mu'mineen. He came and he stood behind the door. He tells him, Ukhruj lana litubayah. Come out and give your bay'ah to your Khalifa. Amir al Mu'mineen did not come out. The narration said that there were companions in the house of Amir al Mu'mineen. The, uh, one narration says that there were many of the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen, they were inside the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is one narration. And another says that it was only Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. They stood behind the door. Then he said, gather the wood, gather the flames. They made a fire behind the door of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the door of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. He told him, come out and give your bay'ah. They told, or else I will burn the door upon you and I will enter the house without permission. This is the house that Rasulullah used to stand for six months and ask permission before entering. They told him, Fatima is in the house, the daughter of Rasulullah. He said, so what? I will enter the house. He pushed the door and he broke the door. Fatima al-Zahra was behind the door. She told him, Ya ibn al-Khattab, ma lana walak, oh, oh son of Khattab, what do you have against us? He told her, I'm going to attack, to take the, to ask for the, to ask Ali ibn Abi Talib to give bay'ah. 
He pushed the door, Fatima Zahra was behind the door. He realized she was behind the door. He began pushing. He placed his back on the wall and his legs on the door. He began pushing and pushing until the nail went in the ribs of Fatima. Fatima Zahra at that moment, her ribs broke and and she had a miscarriage at that time. Then they went, they took Ali ibn Abi Talib, they placed a rope on the neck of Ali. And they began dragging him outside the house. They began pulling him and taking him towards the masjid. Fatima Zahra at that moment, she called out. She called out, Ya Fidda tu adrikidi, faqad wa rabbi asqatu jadidi. She called Fidda because this was she, this was something that was happening to her. She needed a woman to help her. She needed a lady to help her. Ya Fidda tu adrikini faqad wa rabbi asqatu janini faasqatat bint al-huda wa asafa janinaha dhak al-musamma muhsina they attacked and they took Ali ibn Abi Talib to the masjid. Fatima al-Zahra lost consciousness. Once she woke up, she asked Sayyida Zainab, a little child next to her. She tells her, Ya Zainab, Aina Abaki, where is your father? She tells her they took him. They placed a rope on his neck and they took him to the masjid. She forgot all of her pain. She got up and she went to the masjid of Rasulullah. ابن عمي أو لا أكشف للدعاء رأسي وأشكو للإله شجوني ما كان ناقة صالح وفصيله بالفضل عند الله إلا دوني Sulaim, the companion of Rasulullah, he comes late. He comes a few days after the event. He comes to Med Medina and he hears, he hears people saying, the house of Fatima was attacked. The house of Rasulullah was attacked. But he's embarrassed. Should he go ask Ali ibn Abi Talib? Should he go and ask someone, was your house attacked? What, did someone slap your wife? What, did, he goes and he asks Salman al-Farisi, Salman al-Muhammadi. He tells him, did this really happen to the house of Fatima? The poet, he mentions this. قَالَ سُلَيْمٌ قُلْتُ يَا سَلْمَانُ هَلْ دَخَلُوا وَلَمْ يَكُوا اسْتِئْذَانُ Sulaim asks Salman, did they enter without seeking permission? فَقَالَ إِي وَعِزَّةِ الْجَبَّارِ وَمَا عَلَى الزَّهْرَاءِ مِنْ خِمَارِ they entered, they, they wanted to enter. Fatima did not have the abaya on. So she went behind the door. رعاية للستر والحجاب فمذ رأوها عصروها عصرا كادت بنفسي أن تموت حسرا فأسقطت بنت الهدى وحزنا جنين هذاك المسمى محسنا لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله